in this world, both confidence and competence are really important to the growing, growing society. Confidence and competence bring value to the economy. This means that both confidence and competence are one of the most, one of the many answers to the discipline of becoming healthier, wealthier, and wiser every day. What make me come to this conclusion of this? Because humans are capable of doing anything if they put their mind into it. According to the dictionary, being confident is a feeling of self-assurance arising from one appreciation of one's own ability or quality. The definition of competence is the ability to do anything, so to do something successfully or effectively. With that definition, it is logical the conclusion that confidence and competence go well with each other. In fact, confidence and competence will not work well with, without each other. When I am confident about trying new things, there's a very high chance from, of me failing. But guess what? There's also a very high chance for me to quit trying. The reason for this explanation is that being confident in oneself means that I am being controlled by emotion. That emotion is the emotion of helpful, helpfulness. The hope of me being the hope of me successfully accomplish, accomplishing that task, and that task is a mission. The, de the definition of mission is a pre-established and self imposed object or subject or purpose. That is a great definition that engaged me with one term that they use to describe the word mission. That term is purpose. The definition of purpose is something set up or as an object or end to be attained. Object or end to be attained. That phrase got me thinking. If a person have a purpose, that person will be destined to reach that purpose. It's like our, it's like their destiny, or even fate, if we come down to that. If it's their destiny or fate, what would they think would happen if they take too long or simply fail to complete that purpose? The more hope they feel, they felt in the beginning, the more hopeless they will feel in the end when they fail. This is why we need to stack the odd in our favor. Set the, set the condition so that it's destined for us to win because winning matter. How would I stack the odd in my favor? First, I need to know what battle I need to win. Many people might say that I need to win in my career, however, money can only solve money problem. Not to mention that no one wants to be health wealthier just for themselves. Some may say that they want to be rich for themselves. They want big houses, nice car, and the latest tech. They say that they want all for themselves because they want to show off. With this being said, wanting wanting a luxurious life is not for the individual but other like family, friends and even stranger. I don't want to show anything off. I don't want to prove anything to anyone but myself. Other people want to prove to their friends and family how successful they have become. Therefore, they will buy all their luxurious products. The thing is, they buy luxurious products to match their income and earning. If they earn six figure, they will spend six on six figure car and seven figure house. If they earn a spending with their earning every day. If they match their spending with their earning every day, it seems like their earning will never be enough for content. This is one of the reasons why they will keep working trading money for time. However, this is not 
this will not be sustainable. Once a person buy all the luxury products, most of the time they will buy more than higher buy higher ticket product. The lifestyle will increase correlate to the amount of money they receive. This is why be many rich people do not will not be happy. They are fighting for more. The solution is that they need to make sure that their spending is enough. They need to be content with their possession. Possession. They need to be confident that all of that possession is enough for them, so they can be happy. The idea is not saying that I am not good enough and that I want more. The idea of saying I am good enough, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that there is no more room for improvement. For improving myself, I need to be competent. The definition of competence, as I said before, is having the necessary ability, knowledge, or skill to do something successfully. With this definition, I believe that becoming healthier, wealthier, and wiser every day is the key of being con content, competent. The reason for this is that I will always be learning. When learning new thing, I will gain knowledge. I will learn new and better way to think and act. But learning is not enough to be fully content, con competent. I need to apply the knowledge that I have learned and turn it into skill by practicing. Every skill that I had learned and will learn need to be practiced. One of these skill is social skill. Social skill is the skill that help me interact with other more fluently, thus making me more confidence. Confidence. Social skill doesn't stop there. There is more. Social skill to me is the ability. It's the skill learn to be in this society. To me, there are two type of skill. Personal skill and social skill. It is even reasonable to think that mastering personal skill without social skill will turn a person into an introvert. Mastering social skill without personal skill will turn a person into an extrovert. Therefore, mastering both of this skill will turn a person into an introvert. Which one is it? Which title and skill are the best to become introvert, extrovert, or introvert? I cannot answer anything without any thoughts. That is the best route to disaster. Let's break this down and see what is the best answer. The definition of introvert that I have found is a shy, retained sense people person. This could be a true, but it seems too vast. What I mean by this is that the definition does not apply to every introvert person on this earth. As I researched more, I found that introverts recharge the battery when they are alone more than in a party or group. It is logical that being human being, we are social animal, and that we always work in a team to accomplish many things great thing by building an effective society. This human nature also applies to introverts. They need order to grow and become effective human being. So for introvert, to keep the party going, they need to preserve the battery. This means that they will talk less than other people at the party and will can never choose to be the center of attention. Now for an extrovert, they recharge the battery when they interact with society. This means that to keep the battery, the party going, they are the one who talk the most. The last one is the introvert. Introvert is the balance of both extroversion and introversion. 
Having balance is always a good thing in life. Some even say that having balance is the best thing to, that anyone should reach for. To me, balance is the existence of yin and yang. To me, this is the answer to the best possible choice. Becoming an introvert, being an introvert, and then being an introvert, extrovert, and introvert is not just a psychological thing, but it's a philosophical, ph- philosophical thing. The study of reality, the study of life and death. An introvert is a is one a person who is used to being alone more than in a group. They are in their comfort zone. An introvert is when a person who is used to be in a group more than alone, they are in their comfort zone. They both have opposite characteristics, but they are both the same. Both are too comfortable in their own environment. Comfortness is one of the key aspects of confidence. When I am comf- comfortable with one thing, I lack the other. Just like when I am comfortable with spending, with me spending three or more hours merging playing video game by myself. In conclusion, I am not comfortable comfortable with me talking to anyone. This is the reason why I used to be an introvert, and this is when I realized why this is the case for me, and, and what have I learned from my mistake. The lesson is to prioritize. Prioritize means. That a person had to less rank, organize, or treat things in order of their importance. This principle is important to know, but how do I apply it? Applying it will not be easy. It will take skill. Thus, being skillful is being competence. When I learn how to prioritize or organize my tasks by their importance, I will look for the value. I will look for a good quality. Opportunity. I will look for my growth in the future. How will this apply to my growth in the future? You may ask. The answer is compound effect. Small everyday choice will compound over time, leading to success or disaster depending on the type of close choice. The more tasks I do every section, the more I will get used to do it. A task can be anything because anything can be either build a person confident, competent, or even both. Some tasks will not be taken over by compound effect as soon as other tasks. Those two categories are what I call working tasks and playing tasks. To me, working tasks are, of course, my actual daily salary jobs. However, there is more to it. Working tasks are also my training. My training task will be my workout workout section, my meditation section, and my learning section. My playing tasks are the time I spend entertaining myself, which could be by myself or with my friends or family. Or it is easy to separate the, these those tasks and words, but rather difficult to separate them in practice. There is only one way to do it. And have a balanced life. The way is called time management. The skill of organizing, planning, how to divide your time between different activity, and achieve your goal and prioritize. When it comes down to confidence and competence, time management is both. In terms of confidence, I need to make sure that the appropriate activity. Be right for that time. Meanwhile, I, m- I need to make sure that th- this activity will not be right for that time. I need to adapt to change. I need to be confident when planning my time. My plan, my when planning my time, applying the action to my plan, and then finally sticking to that application of the plan. To how long it will take me to become. Effective and master the task. The longer the time pass, the more effective and masterful I will become. That is why time management is also being competence. This is the principle of compound effect.
in the future. I need to be positive in my thinking. If I think negatively, I will give up. If I give up on that task, that is the only way I will fail. I don't fail by not being able to complete the task. It is not about failing a task, but rather about not completing the task yet. Some tasks can take a very long time to master. However, life is pretty un unpredictable. We cannot predict the future. That is why we need to comp be competent. And when it is about learning and planning, know the fastest way to learn and know the best plan for the most effective mastery and completion of that task. Enjoy this journey, my friend.